Today, we are going to be talking about saving you time and adding some minutes, some days, some weeks, some years back to your life so that you can, and we're going to cover that, um, what, what it really does in terms of making a difference for your life. But before we get into that and talk about what, what we're going to do to save you time and add weeks and months and years back to your life, um, let's just for a second let you know that this is uh, put on by two organizations. The first is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Big thanks to Craig Grant, the founder over there. Uh, I am also an instructor there, so check out RE. TI.US. I'm going to drop that link in chat here. Um, RETI, if you are interested in learning anything to do with technology to improve your business uh, or anything with marketing to improve your business, check out RETI.US. Check out getting a membership over there. A lot of associations already have it as a member benefit, so you might already have a free account. Uh, so definitely check out if you do, or if you don't, let your association know that it is a great member benefit to add. Yep. Bring out new partners all the time. So absolutely. Um, and then this is also put on by Service for Life. Uh, if you are interested, and that's my organization, Service for Life. I know we actually even have some Service for Life clients in chat today. Uh, if you are interested in uh, growing a 100% repeat and referral business where you're not having to chase leads or worry about where the next deal is coming from, check out Service for Life. Uh, it has been doing that for agents for a very long time and continues to be successful. And I will drop that link into chat as well. All right. So we are talking today about saving time. And let's give a quick overview today of what we're actually going to be doing um, and, uh, you know, how we're going to save everybody some time. So the first thing is, uh, let's talk time saving for a little bit and what adding a few minutes here and there really do to your life because people tend to look for those really significant changes in their business that save them hours and hours and hours. But the reality is um, a lot more gets done in business and in life with something we call micro automation. It's not about automating the entirety or 100% or everything and getting gaining hours at a time. It's about saving yourself five minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes here, and those things start to add up. So we're going to show you what that means. Then Craig is going to show his favorite app that saves him time that he thinks uh, real estate agents can save time with as well. Then I am going to show mine. Uh, then we're going to have a wrap up. But I do want to mention to everybody in chat, if you have time-saving apps that you use that we're not mentioning today, let us know in chat as well, um, because we are a community here that tries to help one another, and we want to get your input as well. Um, also, we have Peggy from uh, Norwell, Massachusetts. Hello, Peggy. It's great to see you. I uh, got some good friends in, in chat today. All right, so let's talk um, time-saving for a minute. And I, I mentioned the notion of micro-automation. But the real thought here is, I, I want to ask you, why, why save 10 minutes, right? Why take an hour, right, to prioritize something to save 10 minutes? Well, if it's something you're doing over and over and over again, those two minutes here, five minutes there start to add up. So let's just give you a quick example here. Let's say you save yourself 10 minutes every morning as part of your daily routine. We're not talking a ton of time. We're talking 10 minutes a day. Okay. Now let's add that up in terms of what that means for your career. So 10 minutes a day over 250 days. I'm not even going to go 365. I'm just going to talk about working days here. Now, let's be honest, real estate agents work every day, <laughs> right? <laughs> but like, let's just say you use this five days out of a week um, instead of wait, use, having to use this little trick or these things that we're showing you every single day. If you are saving 10 minutes a day that at 250 days a year, that is 2,500 minutes. That is 41 hours a year. That's a work week. I mean, that's an average. That's a whole week you just uh, got back. Right? Like that is an average person's work week is 41 hours that you just added back to your schedule. Now you can do anything with that. You can take some of that time off and take some of that time to, to relax a little bit more. You can add that as another week where you're prospecting and adding deals to your bottom line or maybe organizing your business for the upcoming year. Now let's play this out even further, right? Let's say you're in the industry uh, for 10 years. Now I know a lot of you have been in the industry for 
lot longer than that. But let's just say on a 10 year scale at 41 hours, you're going to save 410 hours. That is 17 days worth of time that you save over 10 years. That's two weeks. That's an extra vacation somewhere. That's an extra two week vacation somewhere that you can add. And that's just by saving 10 minutes a day. So I want to ask everybody, um, before we dive in any further and Craig starts showing his and all that sort of stuff, what will you do with those extra two weeks vacation? Let me know in chat what you're going to do with those extra two weeks, because I, uh, absolutely want to know. Um, and Craig, is there anything you want to add to just sort of the notion of saving a small amount of time here and there? I mean, I, I can definitely throw in, I mean, any, every time I teach things, I always am a huge believer in you do a little bit of work one time, you know, you invest maybe, you know, an hour doing this, some of the stuff we're talking about and it pays dividends in the long run, like creating templates, creating processes, whatever it is, it saves you time. So it might, you know, feel like you're investing a lot of time to set something up, but it so helps you out in the long run. Absolutely, Craig. Totally. The only thing I would add to that as well is make sure that you are uh, very focused on what you're going to replace that 10 minutes with. If you know you're saving yourself 10 minutes, um, be good about blocking out your time such that that 10 minutes doesn't just disappear, right? You don't just spend that 10 minutes scrolling Facebook. You don't you use it to do something else productive um, and you make sure you focus that time. That's the other sort of thing that I would pay attention to when we're talking about micro automations, making sure you're doing something mm -hmm. with it as opposed to just letting it sort of go out into the ether. All right. So while folks are letting us know what they want to do with those extra two weeks vacation, Craig, are you ready to unveil yep. yours? I am. All of right. Course. All right. Here we go. So Craig, drum roll, please. Right. Yep. What is it? By the way, I had a I had so many candidates of ones I was considering doing. I was thinking about Canva, I was thinking of Bomb Bomb and all that. But to me, honestly, probably the biggest time saver that I have personally, that I also think works great for real estate is QuickBooks Self-Employed. Uh, and I saw rules say travel. I thought about TripIt, but to me, that doesn't apply to the uh, you know the daily job of being a real estate agent or broker. So QuickBooks Self-Employed though is. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, uh, this is owned and run by QuickBooks. Is just a separate mini version of QuickBooks that's more intended for an independent contractor like a real estate agent is. So you don't have the huge version of QuickBooks with employees and all the things you would need if you're running a whole company. It's again meant for an independent contractor or single business owner like real estate. Now, just so you know, if you have, let's say, a husband and wife working together or a team, you can use it for small business units, not just meant for one person. But the bottom line is, it is a great tool for a lot of things. And I saw Joyce in the chat say, using it's great for record keeping. It's even, and I'm, I 100% agree with you, Joyce, but to me, it goes way beyond record keeping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen over to, the, to it on the computer, um, using it um, as a website, because one of the best parts about QuickBooks Self-Employed is it does work as an app on your mobile devices and also on a computer. You can go to the website address. So let me go ahead quickly and share this over for you guys. All right, so you guys should be seeing out. So you just need to change the view if you haven't yet. There you go. Should be all set. Okay. So this is an example of QuickBooks self-employed on my computer. Um, again, you could just go to the QuickBooks website to see this but the app on the mobile device does everything I'm about to show you. But one of the best parts about QuickBooks is the first thing you do when you create your account is you go in and you add all your financial account credentials. So in other words, you do put in your login for your different bank accounts and credit card accounts you want it to track. Uh, and it also has, and by the way, the reason they're doing that is it will start pulling in all your transactions in real time. So let's say you go out to eat uh, dinner tonight at a restaurant, the second that waiter or waitress runs your credit card, that transaction pulls up inside the QuickBooks self-employed app or website within seconds. And then when that waiter or waitress brings you the actual receipt to the table when you're done, you just take your phone out of your pocket, take a picture of it, and now you can throw away the paper receipt. So you don't have to maintain physical printed receipts or the anymore. You can just take a picture of them and it attach it to the transaction in the app. Uh, also, it asks you for the login information into your email account. 
And the reason is how many different businesses these days say will just automatically email you the receipt instead of printing them. So it will constantly scan your inbox looking for any emailed receipts and pull those in automatically. Uh, and then the uh, other thing it's going to do is it will automatically, and by the way, just to kind of quickly show you this, from a transaction standpoint, it does try to automatically categorize all your expenses. That way it's easy for you to keep track of your spending based on categories. And you can go in and you can change the categories or you can also split them if they belong in more than one category or whatever. Uh, but again, this makes it very easy for you to keep track of all your expenses. And then another thing that QuickBooks Self-Employed does, and this really ties into the GPS on your phone, it automatically is tracking your mileage at all times for you. You don't have to worry about logging in and clicking the start and stop button to log your mileage. It does it for you automatically at all times. And let's just say you haven't uh, logged into the your account in a little while. The next time you do, it'll tell you since the last time you're here, You've made 49 trips. Click left on all the ones that were business trips. Click right on the ones that were personal trips. Okay. So whether you're on the computer or on your mobile app, you can very quickly organize all those trips. And that way you're not leaving any money on the table uh, for tracking your mileage. And then the biggest reason why this is a monthly fee program is, again, it is owned and run by QuickBooks. So it is literally helping you do your tax preparation. So it is generating all the documentation you need to turn in for your taxes. Uh, it's helping you keep track of all your different deductions and everything like that. And for any of you guys who have an account or CPA, you can also provide them a login into your account so they could run their own reports and pull whatever kind of data they want out of here. So whether it's you doing your own tax preparation yourself, or if you do have, again, an expert helping you do your tax preparation, it makes it very easy to do so. And then there's all kinds of different kinds of reports you can run uh, you know, at any time to, again, help you with tracking your expenses, running your business, or doing your tax preparation. So to me, this one app covers so many different things. Uh, you don't need a separate app to track your mileage, like MileIQ. It does all that. It does your, all your uh, receipts, all your spending, everything. Yep. So, right, Craig so I just saw Roll ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, two couple things. One, we'll and we're going to get to to Raul has two questions here. We're definitely going to get to those. Um, before we do that, mm -hmm. though, I want to ask everybody in chat a question. Um, how much time do you mm -hmm. spend on a monthly or yearly basis adding your expenses to a spreadsheet somewhere? Right. Yeah. That alone, in terms of time saving, is absolutely huge. Instead of having to input everything. Or manually log in your mileage. That's a huge one for it, a lot of people. Absolutely. And those are those are two things where the because the app does it for you automatically, it might not be perfect, but it gets 90% of the job done for you where all you have to do is go in and start categorizing some of those <laughs> expenses, right? Raul says too much time. I think we've all been there. Um, the other yep. thing I want to mention, so, and, and he asked, is this similar to Intuit from QuickBooks? And I can answer that. Um, so Intuit, they, the main QuickBooks program that they've used for years is something that is really robust and in depth and mm -hmm. is set up for businesses that have tons of employees and so on. What Craig is talking about is a tool that is specifically for solopreneurs, right? People that are like you, an individual contractor as an agent. Um, not necessarily somebody running a whole brokerage or running a large organization, but as an individual agent, uh, it is absolutely ideal for doing that. The other thing I wanted to mention too, quick, Craig, is um, I use. I want to well, real quick, if I can also yeah, kind of yeah. real quickly explain it. Just so you guys know, Intuit is the company that owns and runs QuickBooks. Yes. Okay. So that's it's one. So there's the full version of QuickBooks, and there's the mini version. This is the mini version that's again intended for independent contractors, solopreneurs, like we're talking about. Yep. Now, I do want to add something to this. I use a for personal, for my own personal expenses version of this, which is called mint.com. Now, mint.com mm -hmm. is 100% free. Um, and if for managing all of your personal expenses, your, you know, budgets, your monthly budget, you're in, you're out, you're all that sort of stuff. Uh, mint.com is 100% free. It does the same thing in terms of syncing to all of your accounts pulling them in and then you just have to categorize them. Uh, it helps you set up budgets. It helps you save money. Um, so if you are going to use the uh, this version for yourself, go for it. If you're running something bigger and you just want to manage your personal expenses for free, 
mint.com is great for that. Uh, and then yep. the, the thing I will mention about, um, I guess all of these is Intuit kind of lets you go between one and the other and export data back and forth between all their different platforms. So if you do find yourself using one of them and say, oh, I really need to move over to this other one, um, it's really easy to do so. So it's a, a nice little yep. ecosphere that they run in. Yep. Um, and now to kind of back up to some of the questions, Raul asked, um, does this work retroactively? The answer is yes. So when you put in your login into a bank account or a credit card account or anything like that, um, Intuit can pull in, I believe, 18 months worth of data automatically for you. So it'll go back a year and a year and a half. If there's any stuff you want older than a year and a half, um, you could just upload like any of your, um, what do you call it, your uh, statements. So you could just go into your bank account, go into your credit card account and download those statements and upload them. And it'll, you know, kind of import them that way. So you can go back as far as you want if you upload, but it usually tries to automatically pull in at least a year up to 18 months worth of information. Awesome. So Joyce says, at the end of the year, I export the data and tweak it into categories for the tax preparer. Perfect. It's saving so much time on a weekly basis doing yep. it that way. Uh, Derek says, honestly, uh, I'm actually going to take us over to the chat view here. Derek says, honestly, this app is exactly what I need so I don't end up with piles of receipts that get procrastinated to be organized. Um, I will mention, if you uh, want to add some likes to the video, or we'll see them in notifications there. We got some cool new stuff for, uh, for, for going on with the stream. So we love to see that. Add some likes, share the video out. Um, definitely, definitely do that. Uh, we would appreciate it. And then Roll says, I found Intuit too cumbersome, so I quit using it. This sounds much better. Absolutely. It it's much easier. Way easier. Yep. Absolutely. Um, way, way easier uh, and uh, a huge amount of time saving, um, especially while you're out in the road. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else you want to add there, Craig, to uh, to QuickBooks or? Um, I mean, the, the other thing I'll throw in is there's other companies out there that have similar products. Uh, but when it comes to stuff like all your finances and compliance, having a big name like Intuit behind it is important. You know what I mean? Um, you don't want to try some of these never heard of companies that are doing similar stuff. I mean, if it's going to tie into your bank account, tie into your credit cards and all that, having a huge name, in my opinion, is a big thing for security, compliance, everything. Awesome. All right. Uh, Craig, do you mind dropping the link to the, uh, actually, I can do it here. I'm just going to drop the link to self-employed right in chat so everybody can see that. Um, if you are interested, you can check out signing up there or downloading uh, the app there as well. You can also get it uh, just by searching um, Intuit QuickBooks self-employed on the App Store or the Android Play Store. All right, so mm -hmm. the next one we're going to do is free. Uh, so you don't need an account for it, even though this one is totally worthwhile. Craig, anything else before I dive into uh, into the one that I'm doing today? I don't think so. I mean, if anyone has any questions, of course, feel free for you asking it. But the product really does cover a lot of bases, which usually I try to use free or inexpensive tools. But this one, to me, it's worth it. It really I, is. Absolutely. It is definitely a great one. And if you're kind of interested in in how it works a little bit, like I said, check out mint.com. The other thing that's great is mint.com is great for teenagers, people you're trying to teach how to run a budget and manage a budget and do all those sorts of things. Um, super helpful to, uh, to add to your whole family. So, all right. Well, I think it's time. I'm going to dive into mine. You ready? We ready for this? Um, I, <laughs> all right. Drum roll, please. Um, the one I'm going to talk about today is Google Assistant. Now, before everybody goes, oh my God, Google. This works on your iPhone as well as your Android. Um, Joyce says, I use Mint as well at, for personal tracking. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, their whole suite are, is really fantastic. So definitely check that out. Now, as I said, I'm going to talk about the Google Assistant. Um, and when not this for the, like I said, the iPhone folks out there, this works for you too. In fact, uh, we're going to cover some things that are really, really great to be able to do on your devices. Uh, both iPhone and Android, and there is a huge amount of time saving. And I use this consistently every day to save time 
on all my devices and save time both in my personal life as well as in my business life. Now, I'm going to cover some things today about how I do this to, to save time and show you some examples as we go. So the Google Assistant, for those folks that don't know, is not necessarily automatically installed on all Android devices. So you might need to go to the Play Store on your Android device to actually download the Google Assistant. That's super easy to do. On iPhone devices, same thing. You simply go into the App Store and you download the Google Assistant app and it is available for download on, on all iPhone and Android devices. Now, the Google Assistant app works in a few different ways. It also works on a bunch of your home devices. Uh, it works in Android Auto if you're in your car. Uh, it works over Bluetooth. There's all sorts of devices that integrate with this Google Assistant and make it easy for you to give voice commands to absolutely everything that you're doing out there. Um, the, the voice commands are really incredible with what you're able to do and how much time you're able to save. And I'm going to cover a few of those today to try to make it very easy for everybody. So first is just to give you an idea. This works across all sorts of different devices, your phone, your smartphone, your speaker, your display, your television, your Chromecast. There's all sorts of things you can do to integrate with this. But I'm going to show you some of the productivity things and some of the, the tools that I use. Now, there is a link I'm going to put in chat. And this is the Google Assistant Explorer. And this allows you to search all of the different, literally millions of different commands that you can give the Google Assistant to try to save you some time. And I'll walk you through some of my favorites um, that just add to your day and make things a lot easier. So here we go. Let me drop this right into chat. Um, this is the reference site where you can look up what all the different resources and actions are available out there. You can literally just search and say, oh, I want to I want to search here and I want to say, what are the uh, productivity tools right, that I can set up? Or what can I do with health and fitness? Or what can I do in business and finance, right? And what sort of commands can I use to quickly give a voice command? Now, let me show you quickly how this works, okay? So I use some things consistently. The first one that I use uh, all the time is our task list. And I use Google Keep for this, um, but I can very easily add items to my task list if I need to. So let's say I get a phone call. I hop off and I just quickly need to add a task. I say, okay, Google, add template graphics to my task list. Okay, I added template graphics. Right? Now I have a quick and easy add to all my task list. Now I've extended this and we actually use this uh, for the whole family when it comes to our grocery list. So we have a, a Google device in our kitchen. Um, these work on all sorts of different devices, but we just quickly say, okay, we're out of bread. Okay, Google, add bread to my grocery list. Got it. I added bread. And we're all set. We're moved on. We're, we're out of bread. Now, it goes a step further. I use something for timers, and I use reminders all the time. And the reason I want to show you this is, let's say... You want to make sure you give yourself and you want to be intently focused on a project for 30 minutes. And that's what you want to do. You want to make sure you're focused and not distracted for 30 minutes. Okay, Google, set a timer for 30 minutes. Fourth timer for 30 minutes. Starting now. 30 minutes. We're ready to go. We are focused on what we're doing. Okay. Now let's say ah, I have something that's starting at 4 p.m. and I need to make sure I'm there. Okay, Google. Add a reminder for at 3.55 p.m. for a webinar. Got it. I'll remind you at 3.55 p.m. Right? There we go. I've had a reminder to my day. Now, those are all very, very simple things where I would have otherwise had to go into my calendar, add a reminder, set up a clock, click all these buttons, do all these things, where in reality, it just took me a few seconds to, to quickly go, okay, I've got my day all set up. I'm ready to go. Now, you can do anything from uh, ask Google what, um, you know, what the, what's on your calendar for that day. You can ask it to play music for you. 
One of my favorite things to do with it is uh, I use it every morning along with my alarm. So I have a Google Assistant, what's called Routine, set up to go along with my alarm, where after I turn my alarm off in the morning, Google tells me what the weather is going to be that day, and then tells me what's on my calendar and reads it off to me as I'm getting up in the morning. So I know I'm ready to go. And you can customize all of that. Um, you can customize all of those things. And there are a ton of different uh, commands that you can integrate into your daily business and life uh, to save you a ton of time. Um, Craig, are there any favorites that you have? Um, trying to think. I mean, calendars that like you did events and shopping are definitely the major ones that I use. Um, I can tell you, like, we monitor all of our kids' video game activity time with it. Nice. We put them on timers. Uh, so we it kind of really cuts out the arguing. We even uh, monitor, like, with our kids, uh, their TV time. Like, we let a kid choose each show, and then it rotates. So that way, you know, it kind of removes the parent having to be in the middle. We're just like, all right, little timer goes off and says, now it's Addison's time to pick a show. Absolutely. I mean, so we, we kind of use it in kind of little different ways as parenting. Um, other than just doing reminders and calendar stuff. Awesome. Absolutely. The other big one, the other little trick uh, that, that I'll mention is we use it for uh, cooking. I set timers yep. as we're oh, yeah. cooking, cooking absolutely. constantly instead of having to set one on the, you know, on the stove or another reminder or whatever. You know, if I've got three different things going, I just keep telling my phone to add timers to do whatever uh, and cooking becomes a breeze. That being said, though, I do want to take you through just a couple that I know for myself are some big um, time saving ones beyond just the alarm and the timer and things like that. Um, asking it specific things about your schedule is really key. Uh, you can also ask it things about finance or what's going on in the world. The other thing I want to mention with Google Assistant that's a little different than what Amazon or what Siri do is that Google allows you to string together conversation. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, okay, Google, who was the first person that landed on the moon? According to Wikipedia, Apollo 11 was the space flight that first landed humans on the moon. Right? I know, super controversial topic. Um, but then I can go, okay, Google, how far away is that? These are the top results. Right. And then all of it is how far away is the moon? And I've got it right in front of me. It's it actually allows you to reference conversation um, and have more of a conversation with the device as opposed to just a single command over and over and over. Um, but I have everything from our house lights to our temperature gauges to all that sort of step, stuff set up uh, on voice command. And it saves me a ton, a ton of time. Now, I'll ask. If anybody oh, is yeah. using a system, smart home, smart. By the way, I wasn't even thinking about stuff like smart home stuff. Like all of the lighting in our houses is all running off of it. Um, you know, stuff like that. There's definitely a lot more functions that I utilize. Yep, absolutely. Um, there's a ton. I'll, you know what? There's another article that's a, a great one that I will put in chat as well. Um, sorry, one sec here. Uh, this is a, a. I call. I use this one a ton, um, but it walks you through a whole bunch of them. And there are things like, you know, what's traffic like on the way to a location, um, translations, uh, changing the lights and all the degrees. You can make phone calls. You can send text messages. That's one of the things I really love when I'm driving um, is it, especially if you have Android Auto, you can easily just tell it to send people uh, text messages and be totally hands free while you're doing that. So um, that's a good one. And then there's all sorts of fun stuff that you can do, like, uh, okay, Google, tell me a joke. Why won't shrimps share their treasure? Because they're shellfish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we just lost viewers there. I don't blame you. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I just want to mention, last but not least, uh, that this is really what you make of it. So... The more time, like Craig said, the more time you spend up front learning some of these commands, thinking about ways that you can integrate them into your daily life, um, the more time that you are going to save on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis to be able to add some of that time back to your life. Uh, all right. So anything else, Craig, to add? Um, no, 
I think you, I think you definitely summed it up well. The more some of this stuff might sound or seem a little bit intimidating or scary, but it really is, and it's pretty easy to do. It's just about getting in there and playing with it. Absolutely, it, at, you're you couldn't be totally more right there, Craig. It is really just about getting into it, diving into it, not being afraid of it, and playing with it a little bit. Um, and it's okay to, uh, you know, sort of. Actually, I'll give you one more tip. This is one I had to give for my mom. Um, my mom is super polite, and I am too. But don't ask questions; give commands when it comes to Google. Like, okay, Google, do this for me, as opposed to, um, hey, would you do this thing for me, right? Give it a command, uh, focus on that command, but that really is, I think, one of the biggest ones I can mention. Now, are there any questions, um, are there any questions before we, uh, we wrap up today? Was this helpful? Let us know if this was helpful. If it was, we would love to uh, drop a like on the video. If you learned something today, um, we would definitely appreciate that. So thank you to everybody for uh, for dropping that like in advance. Um, we have a few notes and things in closing before we close down here. So the first of which is, once again, this is brought to you by the Real Estate Technology Institute and Service for Life. Uh, Craig and I uh, both do a lot with both organizations. Craig is the founder over at RETI. If you are interested in learning anything to do with technology or marketing in your business, uh, definitely check out a membership over there. And that is at reti.us. And I'm going to put that in chat. Um, then you can also check out uh, Service for Life at serviceforlife.com. I'm going to put that in chat as well. Uh, if you are interested in growing a 100% repeat and referral business where you don't have to worry about chasing clients, you're not worried about where that next deal is coming from, uh, check out serviceforlife.com. It is super duper helpful. 